jump in this thing and see what it'll do. Oh yeah, what you are looking at is a bona fide blowed up 426 wedge. It's not really sad news. I got like 17,000 miles out of that motor and then it broke like a ringland or something because I'm just cruising down the highway and I'm just going in one of the cylinders and I shut it off, fired back up and the noise went away. And I'm like, I still got like 200 miles or 100 miles to get home. Screw it, we're going. So. I drove all the way home and I pretty much considered the engine like won't clap or broken but it ran good enough that we were like hey we're gonna autocross this thing and so that's what it did we autocrossed it and I told Mike a buddy up in North Dakota Mike he's the one that drove this car for the majority of the weekend I only drove one lap in this car the whole weekend and that's the lap that the motor finally went uh, done I told him the engine in this car is coming out no matter what because the engine's screwed up. But it runs good enough that we're going to beat the piss out of it. And beat the piss out of it, we did. So it seized up and half of the smoke that you saw in the video <laughs> was not tire smoke. Half of that smoke was blow by that was billowing out of the engine. It had so much blow by it was filling the valley pan with oil. We had rags and towels and stuff all around this engine to try and contain the amount of blow by that it had. And sorry to the rest of you autocross guys, because yes, this thing was puking oil everywhere. I got to do one last hoorah in it in that police chase that you saw. As soon as I lifted off the throttle doing that donut with the police car, I had an engine locked up and it was done and no more. <laughs> All right, well, because there was oil everywhere on this car and my good buddy Gary let me tow it home on his trailer, his brand new trailer, I uh, autographed his trailer for him in oil. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Gary. <laughs> All right, Derek. Let's degrease and pressure wash this turd. I think we might have found the problem. I might have had a little something to do with it. And I haven't even got to the other side yet. Oh, that came off really easy. So something, something was in this cylinder. All right, so something has damaged the pistons. 
on four cylinders. On the passenger side, two and eight. And on the driver's side, three and five. And by the gouges that are in it, it looks like piston ring material. But there's no gouges in any of the cylinder walls. None of the pistons are damaged. Or none of the pistons have ringland issues. So I'm really curious to see if one of these pistons is missing a piston ring and then how the hell did it get off the piston and into the cylinder without damaging any of the cylinder walls or lifting a ring lamp. <laughs> Alright, so I pulled this piston out and I was just like... <laughs> I have never ever seen that so that is where my ring my my piston rings came out of the piston and you couldn't see it because all of that piston ring came out of that little tiny nick i never would have thought that little tiny i thought that nick was from all the damage from the from from in the piston not just not not the piston ring being snaked out of that that is amazing so this is actually why the engine stopped running. <laughs> These are both bearings. <laughs> One's a little wider than the other because it got so hot, it smelted and reformed itself and made itself bigger. So yeah, this used to look like this. The reason it did that is because the engine had such bad blow-by that all that pressure that was being pumped into the crankcase because of this and because we were thrashing the car around, mobbing it, sliding it, drifting it. So the oil's already whipping back and forth. Combine that with all that added crankcase pressure, there was probably no oil in this pan. It was probably all at the top of the motor. But I've got a secondary plan. I have got a 440 back here that I got off a tweaker. So here's my tweaker motor. Tweaker motor is going to go in the General Lee. This had Elbrock heads on it with comp valve train and everything. Like this was actually a good motor. So it has probe pistons in it. It's got some kind of cam. I don't know. That's coming out. But look, it's already got an aluminum water pump. We got good pistons. The bore is good. We're going to just rip this engine apart, go through it if it needs bearings, put bearings in it. We're going to dingle ball it and slap that sucker together. So then the General Lee will no longer be dead in the water. It'll actually run and drive. Also moving. If you notice the backyard is like super cleared out from what it used to be. Go into a bigger property. I can actually work freer, more space. Ah, my General Lee. One of the most used and abused cars I have in my fleet. We beat the tar out of this thing. I do feel bad for it, but that's the whole reason I bought this car. I wanted a generally that I can treat as if it was on the show, minus the jumping part, because I want to keep driving it. For those of you that don't know, they did destroy 329 of these chargers on the show. I want to keep this one, but if I do wrap it around a pole or take out a quarter panel, whatever, I can fix that. I've got this frame jig right here. I'll strap it to that and fix it. So. That just ends the guys that are whining. Oh, you're destroying it. No, I'm not, I can fix this thing. But look, the big old hole here, we're gonna plug that hole. Well, that sounded kind of dirty, huh, Derek? <laughs> but we, the General Lee is finally gonna get an engine back. It's not gonna get the 426 wedge. I have thought about it, was gonna fix it, chucked it, don't care. It's just there's no point in even running a 426 wedge when there's 440s. There's more parts available, bigger bore, better all the way around. But before we put the engine in it, I don't like this as black. This is a Chevy thing. You know, painted body, black engine bay. That's like a Chevy and Ford thing. It kind of eats at me. I don't want that no more. So before we put the engine in, Derek and Walter are going to strip this engine bay and I'm going to paint it. Yes paint it and we're gonna paint the hood too because the bottom side of the hood this let me show you the bottom side of this hood ooh, got a duck here has never been painted and so it is uh 
bare metal and rusty, but this is a junk hood anyway. So don't worry about me sliding across the hood and trashing the hood because look at this crap. Nobody is going to miss this rotted hood. So let us have our fun. All right, another thing that is completely clapped out in this car is not only the decals, which are really clapped out, look at this, wiped out. Vegas sun destroys everything. And I'm gonna lock myself out, oh, there we go. The interior on the General is toast. We're always having to throw towels on the seat to drive around or to, to trash on this car. And well, when you're on a crappy seat like that, which these seats are not bolstered, and then you throw a towel on top of that, you're really hanging onto that steering wheel or holding onto anything when you're drifting this thing around. So kind of wanting to keep stockish interior just for the nostalgia. I'm gonna, we're gonna pull these seats out. I'm gonna get them reupholstered, but we're gonna get them reupholstered in generally tan interior. Yep. All the guys complaining, that doesn't have, or General Lee's don't have black interior. Yeah, I know. I wasn't going to spend the money to convert it, but now that this interior is completely clapped out, it needs it. So tan carpet, tan seats, and these door panels are obviously junk. There is no saving this. And the gauge cluster, you can't even read those gauges. All we need to know is needles up is good. So as long as needles are up, we're good. But yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and pull the cluster out and reface the gauges. But the bezel itself doesn't look bad. So we'll just leave that alone. We wanna do bolt, you wanna go for a ride? You never ridden in this one, huh? Yep. Wow, that console is filthy. Oh, and we gotta get the emergency, we gotta get the drift brake working better because this thing sucked. It was not working good. So. What do you think, Bolt? Lots to do? Yeah, there's lots to do, huh? Ooh, look at the bling. Yep. Out with the 426 wedge and in with this beautimous 440 that is better all the way around. Probe pistons, higher compression, same cylinder heads, but these are ported uh, from the 426 wedge. These had to get repaired. These are uh, buddy Gary in Wyoming. Uh, Gary Enlow with Pentastar Performance repaired these heads. Got them all put together, so now I can. These were bolted to the new 440. This engine should make way more powers and torque, being that it's more compression and more cubes. So that way, the can that's in it will have more grunt for me because that can was slightly too big for low compression and smaller cubes. But the 440 is getting ready to go back into. Well, that didn't look cool, huh? The General. So it's borderline paint spraying temperature. Don't care, because this sucker is going orange tonight. I got other things I gotta do, including race car. So this thing's gotta get painted and we gotta get a motor in this thing like soon. Shaker, Derek. <laughs>
It's painted. Pow, look at that. Looks good. I like it. That'll look so much better than that ugly black. And then all the hackery that was on the firewall right there and all of the additional holes in the inner fenders. So now it is more, well, more besters. We're gonna put new decals on it. We've got all new, well, not all new interior, but we got new carpet and seat, and seat upholstery going in it. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and blow the dash or paint it, blow the dash tan with all the pads and everything. That'll look most gooder. Say hi, Derek. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Old Lee is getting a makeover. This thing was clapped out when I got it and all we did was <laughs> run this thing into the ground. And then Mike finished it off. We'll just blame it on him. Anyways, this is going to be hours and hours of just assembling all the little pieces back together. Shazam, got the engine ready to go in. The engine bay looks magnificent actually. I do actually like it and I'm not trying to like emphasize it. It's just, I'm so glad to not see a shitty black engine bay with patches and a bazillion holes in the inner fenders. So it is way cleaned up, looks good. We got the header wire tied out of the way. Got the engine ready to go almost. The only thing is I need to mark the balancer no, I'm sorry. I need to mark the flex plate to the torque converter. I don't know why I said balancer. All right, so the bolt pattern on these torque converters and the flex plates not perfectly symmetrical, like evenly spaced. So you have one bolt that's like like a quarter inch off, and you don't want to oblong the hole in the flex plate. So usually what I'll do is I'll come in here with the flex plate and I'll line it up so all four holes line up to the bolt pattern, and it's centered around the hub here now i'll go ahead and mark where the where the flex plate lines up to the torque converter so that way when i'm trying to bolt this to that i'm not having to spin 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 i'll get three bolts in it and then realize oh crap the last one doesn't line up pull them all out rotate it again get three bolts in it oh crap last one doesn't line up. so instead of having to go through that whole hassle so much easier just to mark mark denzo Yep, engine bay looks a little different than the last time you saw it with the engine going bloop, dropping right in. Uh, Derek, right now, what are you doing, Derek? Sanding? Yep. So I had Derek sand the dash from a generally, and right now he's sanding the orange off of the inside of the door jams and the inside of the door, not door jams, but the inside of the door because we're going to spray paint the dash and the inside door, the inside door shell like the t5 or t3 copper like the same as patina because like i said before the general's going tan interior and i don't want a black dash with tan interior that just looks hacky look at my big old bushy sideburns i got like the whole 70s nascar look going on because this thing here was killer like the nose is all mangled up right now but we just got done with a three-day show here in vegas with this car and we came out looking like heroes. I mean, like the total underdog rolling in on my dinky little orange trailer being pulled by Smurf, the tunnel ram charger, racing against full blown like NASCAR hauler guys with, with cars, backup cars, big teams, guys that have been doing this shit for years. And we annihilated them in our heat race and was doing really good in the main like i led six seven laps in the main event before the right front shock gave out and i could keep the right front frame roll off the ground and i ended up falling to like 11th but for like six seven laps i was a badass i had the whole cinderella story going in my head and then someone just pulled the rug out from under me and i fell to 11th i was like damn it 
But the first night, the axle in this car got almost ripped out of the car. The car got wrecked really bad the first night. We cobbled it back together and it was wicked fast. I'll post highlights of that race here in a little bit. Actually, I'll just go ahead and drop them right now. Three laps remain. Birdsong going to slide across, turns one and two up to the top side and down the back straightaway, three wide stair step. Ursetta, Jaeger, Ricky Umverano, and here comes TM3. Three laps down this time, Birdsong still leads. Dominic Ursetta working the high line of the speedway. Maybe a tick tight to work through the top side. He'll give a couple of spots away now as Ricky Alvarado slides up into the number four position. Colin Hibden alert. He's on the move again. Working to the outside of Ursetta now as he comes up inside of the top five cars. Four laps scored, 21 to go. Birdsong, Morris. Jaeger, Alvarado, three wide for the number five spot. Gustus Urseta and Colin Hibden all right there. We're pitching a doozy here at the XR Vegas Dirt Track. Five laps scored this time, 20 to go. Birdsong to the bottom side. TM3 will follow in the tire tracks, but he'll hang to the bottom even better. Birdsong slides up across the top side. Motors down the back stretch with about a car length and a half, maybe two between. Two distinct lines we work across the top. Birdsong with about a half a car length as they come under the stripe. Six down, 19 to go. Morris slides up to the inside once again. Ricky Alvarado, Colin. Okay, back to the general. Engine bay is a lot different. I put a new engine harness in it. I tidied up a lot of the wiring, a lot of the accessories, and I've just cleaned up everything a lot. And this car is going to have AC. So looky here. I got my AC firewall bulkhead fittings, and I got my heater. Uh, this, is for, this is for my heater core. So I made this one out of just some old fittings I got, and that one's going to go here. So we're going to put that one there, and we're going to put the AC one here. So it'll be pretty sweet looking. And my cheapo Chineseum AC heater box assembly fits right under the dash. Like, totally fits under the dash. Like, no tight fitting or anything. And so that way I can use all my uh, ducting and run it right to the original AC vents on the dash. Oh, yeah. I'll have, like, an entire AC system in this car for, like, 500 bucks. <laughs> All right, Derek, let's pull all this plastic off. General's interior got painted. Oh, it's going to be so nice not having to look at a black dash anymore and actually have correct colors interiors. Then, what are the keyboard warriors going to say when the interior color has been corrected and I'll have a push bumper? What could they possibly complain about the Generally now? What do you think, Derek? I don't know. Re like? Repop wheels. Oh, the repop. Oh, yeah. I don't have the correct 14 by 7 General Lee wheels. That's okay. that's probably what they'll complain about next. What do you think? How's it look, Derek? What do you think? Oh, it looks good, man. Well, yeah. right. Can't forget my drift braking brake bias adjuster. Yeah.
check it out. It's coming along. It's got floors in it. No longer have to flintstone this thing because it was pretty bad. So cut everything out. I cut those floor patches out of this front clip right here. This, this was going to be the donor front clip for that yellow car. But then I found out that this thing has been in a wreck and nothing is square on that right side. So cut the floor patches out of it. We got the distributor in it now. We got the wires run. I need to start working on uh, the fan shroud, the pulleys, so and to reroute some oil cooler lines because everything's a little bit different now. Okay. One thing I'm lacking though is console brackets because this car did have a console in it. But you see, that's a red console bracket with a green floor. Yeah, this was never belonged to this car. It is like booger welded in there, but it's booger welded good enough to where it ain't going to come out. Although these are buddy seat brackets. What they had done is they just hammered them over and just laid the console on top of it. That's no buenos. So I'm going to cut these out and walking on over to my racing car project. This has console brackets in it. So I'm going to cut that one out and I'm going to cut that one out. So then I will actually have legit console brackets. All right. So today's agenda I want to get those console brackets done. Uh, I need to seam seal the floors and I can start putting my gate or my dash back together. Ooh, that, I forgot to show you that. See, look, we just kind of did a quickie job on sanding. Like this is all just dust. It's really dusty here because all the dirt, obviously. But I sprayed T3 bronze and then I sprayed a uh, matte clear coat over it and it came out really good actually. So, and then the dash pads, that's Palomino uh, interior dye. But then what I did is I, after I sprayed it, I quickly dusted over it with uh, camel color. So that way it gives me like a nice, uh, like textured or like a multi grain color vinyl. And it looks really good actually. So these were black, no, these were green actually. All right, time to cut the brackets out. Progress has been made. Check it out. Got my gauge clusters in, my bezels on. I got my dash harness in. The old dash harness was junk, so I robbed this dash harness out of another dash I had. Got my console brackets in. Got the firewall insulated. And I had to do some wiring too. Like this thing had a console in it before. Like I said, it just had some hokey brackets and it didn't actually have the wiring for the console. So I went ahead and tapped into the harness so I actually will have, and my map light will work, my console lights will work, because it was pretty dark in the generally at night. Like you open the door, the only thing that worked was a dome light. So it should be lit up now. So I'm actually kind of excited about having more light in the car, but check out my gauge cluster, man. That looks pretty sweet, right? So this is a cluster that was, I can't even remember. I think Julius made this cluster. It, uh, or he made the gauges anyway, because these are like uh, 3D printed gauges. So they're not factory gauges. So like this, is a, that's a TikTok tack without the TikTok. So it's just the tack, which I like that. Um, the speedometer, that I think it's a factory mechanism, but the everything else is aftermarket or what, what's handmade. And all those, all those gauges there are three D printed. So, and it has a, a circuit board in the back. So it, this is a much nicer gauge cluster. Hopefully it works. I this I got that cluster with a car that I bought years ago. So I'm like, I've been sitting on it and I was like, well, you know what? Screw it. Let's just throw it in this car. The weather is supposed to turn pretty shitty. Like right now, it's not bad. I don't, I'm not, I don't have like five layers on right now. It's actually probably like in the high fifties, low sixties. Well, probably high fifties, but it's going to start turning dark here in a couple hours. Got a bunch of rain coming. So 
I'm gonna try and get the steering column in. I'm gonna try and get the carburetor on, get my hoses on, uh, maybe get the fan and fan shroud on. So I need to start really making some progress on this thing. I don't know if I'm gonna get to the carpet yet. So I don't know, I'll try and get the carpet in, but I also want to uh, insulate the rear floorboard, which I'm all out of insulation. I used the last I had on the firewall. So I wanna insulate the rear floorboard because I wanna try, get, try and make it quieter and more comfortable and cooler in this car because this is gonna be it this well this was my daily before along with patina and smurf and minty but i need to make this car comfortable so but it's also gonna haul ass way more horsepower than the 426 two points more compression and 20 something more cubic inches yeah <laughs> I have seriously been making a lot of progress on this car, but it's all in like little areas that uh, are not exactly easy to point out on camera. You will notice there is a blue anodized hose in with 99% of everything else black. I have really been going through my bins of just old hoses and fittings and just trying to use up some of the crap I've accumulated all these years. So I'm not spending so much money on these freaking cars. But look at this, it's coming amazing. I'm hoping I got the right fitting, I guessed. Okay, I did. I was at the, uh, the all hose and they didn't have the exact fitting I wanted so I guessed on getting an elbow for this. Luckily it is 3 8 MPT. So this can go, this can go right there and then my fuel filter can attach to that but look i got my carburetor we got the plugs wires i'm actually mocking up my heater hoses right now because what i'm going to be doing here is i'm getting rid of the barb fittings i'm actually going to weld see look at these right here doo, 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 doo. okay i got some steel bungs that i'm going to weld to the top of my barb fittings that way it converts it to an I just think it looks cooler and simpler. Like that will be much cooler looking than a big old hose arcing up and coming over. So <sighs> just trying to button up everything under the hood. I found a radiator hose that I had. Got my oil cooler lines cleaned up. Got the uh, lower pulley on. Full. Oh. Quit trying to aggravate. But check out the interior. We got carpet now. I finished all my wiring. Oh, the dash is like mostly done painted the console painted all my trim brackets got painted the uh eight pillar covers so i'm leonard was here and he was painting the door panels for me but we ran out of paint to finish that and finish the kick panel so once that paint shows up i can have door panels on and kick panels but i'm actually really like this is like one of my favorite parts in the interior now this steering wheel was given to me by Mike and I have no idea what it came out of because I really like it. It even has like the horn, well, it's not a horn button, but it even has like the standoff, uh, I don't know, I guess the, I don't know, whatever. This deal, the button right here resembles the Mopar and the wood grain is actually like, it has the real wood grain texture to it. So it matches my drift brake pistol grip shifter, but I like this. It's not a Mustang one. Or hell, it might be a Mustang one. I don't know. Maybe you guys will know because I had to cut the back side of the steering wheel off because it, they had an adapter flange that converted it to like a square socket. So whatever the steering shaft was that this went to, it had like a square socket at the end. And then you bolted it to the shaft via nut and all that. But cut all that off, drilled some holes in it so that way I can use the Barry Grant adapter. All comes together. There was actually a hummingbird stuck in this thing this morning. So I stuck my head inside the car. I sat down inside the car. All of a sudden, all this fluttering was happening all around me. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Well, I thought it was like a giant moth or something. So I jump out, look in there, and there's a hummingbird, like, trying to fly against the back window. So I escorted his way out. Yeah, I need to adjust that.
Oh, it's been a lot of days getting the General Lee's engine bay beautiful. This thing was a hunk of shit before. Now it actually looks good. Like I wouldn't mind having the hood popped at car shows now. But don't worry, I am still going to beat the shit out of this car. I just want to make it to where it's more durable. As for the interior, I think I'm going to get back on this tonight. I've got some other things to do. Like, here's some scrap pieces I had left over from trimming the carpet. That's going to get glued onto here. So it'll be Frankensteined carpet patch to go over the console. Yes, I know you can order the piece that goes there, but I'm over it. I'm just using what I've got. So, still got to finish mounting the console. I'm going to insulate the rear floor pan, finish burning my holes for the seat, the carpet piece. And I need to hook up the throttle linkage. And I'm still waiting on more paint so I can finish the door panels. Mm. So much work. I do like my steering wheel though. So bitching. Ah, just plugging away at this thing. Days keep ticking by. Trying to get my rear floorboard insulated. So that way I can put my rear seat in. My rear seat is done. I just gotta go pick it up. So he's working on the front seat. So the front seats that were in the general were rotted beyond reusing. I didn't know this. So he's like, I mean, these seats are junk. And I'm like, bull crap. So I go over there and look at them as he's got the upholstery off and I'm like, wow, these, these are junk. So I had to grab two more front seats that I had so he can finish upholstering those, but he did finish the back. I'm gonna go pick up everything at the same time. I'm just trying to jute the rear floorboard. We actually are putting quieter mufflers on this thing. Yes, you're probably seeing gray hairs there. And me saying quieter, you're like, oh, he's getting old and lazy. No, that's not the case. This thing is actually going to haul the baby, the new addition to the family. And I'm gonna haul the baby home in the generally from the hospital. So, I don't think I mentioned that I'm having a baby. So yeah, I'm having a baby, little baby Henry. Uh, so I'm gonna try and get the rear seat pan insulated. It actually is my first baby too. And I spent a lot of years playing, having fun, horsing around, doing everything I wanted to do. So now we can have a baby. Maybe he can help me build some of my crap years from now. Anyways, so I took a lot of scrap pieces I had from the carpet and I made my little piece over here and then, or the, the little filler piece on the side of the console because I didn't really feel like ordering just that little carpet piece. I was probably spending like 40 bucks on that. So glue it. And this car is not like full perfect resto. This is just trying to be a nicer daily, but we're still gonna beat the shit out of this thing. I just want it to be nicer. Like this car was clapped out, raggedy. It was cold in the winter. It was hot in the summer. It was kind of miserable to drive, but it was still fun. Now it's gonna be comfortable and still fun. And then, yes, it's gonna have quieter mufflers on it, but it's also gonna have cutouts when I want it to be loud. So, yep. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and finish juting this floor. Nothing too exciting about that. Just trimming to fit. I'm gonna jute the rear, uh, uh, seat filler piece and jute the rear seat panel. I'm gonna run my speaker wires because I do want to have a radio in this thing. This car has not had a radio in years. I would always have to bring my little uh, man purse speaker right here whenever I wanted to listen to something. And then still that was only good for like, oh, four hours of music. So on a long road trip, after four hours you're screwed. You're just listening to motor. There's nothing wrong with that. The part of the reason of it being wanting to quiet it down. Okay, yeah, this car has a rear exit exhaust on it. But when you have a trailer on the car with another car on it, where do you think that exhaust noise gets reverted back? Right back at you. So it got noisy when you was hauling a trailer. All right, back to work. I'm liking that aftermarket tack. It's like almost factory looking without the TikTok part, but it will not work without a tack wire. And this car was not equipped with a factory tack. See this little dimple right here? 
that's where the tack wire would have gone through with a grommet there. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one. I'm gonna go ahead and made this real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in there. So then that cool looking tack will actually have some motion to it. Well, when the fluids are going in, you know it's getting close to firing up. Using some of my freebie oil. This is like super thin royal purple, but I've mixed in some straight 50 weight uh, VR1. So I'm gonna be changing the oil on this thing anyway after break in. So might as well use up all my free stuff. Uh, it's time to fire this thing up. I'm always so nervous when I go to fire up a new motor. I don't know why. You just get like all the jitters, your hands get shaky, and then once it fires up and you set the timing, everything's all fine and honky-dory, and you're just kind of like basking in the glory of the choppy cam. But it is go time. So let me go ahead and top off the bowls. All right. So, I'm not going to fire it up from inside the car, I'm going to do it out. I always forget, like, hear the buzzer? So, I put a new wiring harness in this thing, actually not a new, I stole one out of an original dash that I had, and I never had a charger where the buzzer actually worked. So the first time that buzzer's going off, I'm like, oh crap, there's a short somewhere. Well, yeah, there's a short inside the buzzer because that's what makes the noise. So I had to like remind myself, I'm like, oh yeah, that's what it sounds like when everything works. All right, got my key. Let's see what things are gonna do. Oh, come on, baby, let's do this. Sounds like it's really retarded. Still retarded. Well, I've never seen an engine run at like 10 RPM. Freaking kidding me. So for some reason this needle and seat won't hold. Shut up. Like I was saying, for some reason this needle and seat won't hold pressure. When I first looked in it, I saw a piece of debris in there. So I was thinking, okay, I'll fix that. Everything will be honky dory. But no, for some reason it just won't hold and keeps billowing fuel out the vent tube. So luckily I've got more. Dumbass. Well, I know I got oil flow, but the uh, that fitting is loose. That one right there. So that just blew oil over everything.
the temperature now. So I had to put a mechanical oil pressure gauge on it because the gauge on the dash was only showing like 15 to 20 pounds. And that was when it was cold. So I had to stick this guy on there. So we got about 40 pounds at idle now at temperature. So yeah, everything, everything's hot at temperature. So we're good. It's not great oil pressure. I mean, I wish it was a little better, but I did reuse an oil pump. So I don't know, maybe I'll put a new one on it later, but I just reused one of my old oil pumps and it'll work. Ah, but listen to this exhaust note. Yeah, chop, 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 chop. I'm gonna let you take it in for a second. quiet it is up here like the loudest thing is the fan yeah snappy I love it all right buddy good boy uh, correction 65 pounds of oil pressure it's amazing how much oil pressure you have when you fix all of your oil leaks dumbass times two good thing i bought a case of this stuff the general's no longer sitting in the dirt now the dirt car is Got her up on jack stands because we got to fix a couple issues. Got to do a little, few little things underneath the car to tidy it up. Uh, like my trans temp gauge, I got to ground a wire to the sensor. But the biggest issue to fix is the brakes. You see, it doesn't have any on it right now because this thing here was saturated in gear oil. And I was like, why the hell is this thing saturated in gear oil? Well, then I look at the the uh the seal the seal in there the seal's all torn apart but then you see metal has ground into the seal and then metal has ground into the inside of the hat of the brake rotor see how it's all shiny right there so this thing had dual calipers on it so this is the handbrake this is the regular brake so i have dual calipers well on one of my uh roadside repairs and uh I think Chicago, the, uh, I was pulling a trailer and a, one of, wow, the wind just like wanted to rip this door out of my hand. Well, anyways, one of the ball bearings, the driver's side took a shit. So I had to, I was like stuck in the road. Long story short, a guy stopped, Mopar guy. We loaded the generally on my trailer. He pulled me to his house. We fixed it. Problem is, we didn't exactly get this collar in the right spot. I guess we didn't have the bearing all the way down. So we thought we had all the bearing all the way down, welded the collar here because you know we're doing this in the garage. We didn't really have a whole lot to deal with. And we welded it. Problem was the bearing wasn't slid all the way down. It had like, oh, actually you can see. Okay, that that groove, that's where the that's where the well, that's where I had to cut to get the collar loose. So that's a good quarter inch, if not more. And during all of our hot dogging last year, sliding this car around and drifting and everything, well, the axle slid in the bearing. And then when it slid in the bearing, the weld that was right there ate into the seal, which then gear oil came rushing out of here, which the seals inside this ball bearing must not be any good because gear oil went through here, past the seal, into the bearing, out of the bearing, down, all over my brakes and we lost the handbrake and pretty much didn't have any rear brakes to begin with after that so we actually had to like overdrive it to unload the rear tires and slide it into the corner versus controllably going into the corner with the handbrake all being fixed 
problem solving. I'm gonna have to go ahead and weld that thing now. All right, well, the axle fiasco is fixed. You know, I had to wait till this morning to get a seal because AutoZone and O'Reilly's no longer carry that seal on hand. So, but luckily, Napa did. So, this is all repaired. Now we can get on to bleeding the brakes on this thing. Huh? Pump. All right, so we actually have a oh, bolt. <laughs> You're interrupting me, buddy. He just booty bumped me. So, yeah, the handbrake, fully functional and actually way better than it was before. So I went from a three quarter master cylinder to a seven eighths. That way I didn't have to pull it as far, you know, this ways. And it feels really good. And actually the brake pedal is super solid. Like this car has more brakes than it ever did before. We fixed the whole rear axle issue, welded that all back up. And then right now, we are going to attempt to put the decals on. door panel time so these are actually 50 year old original panels you see they're somewhat not perfect i could probably glue that actually yeah i'll glue that back down but we just went ahead and spray dyed these what i use is i use palomino first i spray the whole panel palomino and then i lightly fog it with a camel that way it gives me like a two-tone like multi-grain appearance and really it doesn't make it look like it was just a spray dyed panel because i hate those with just like one color it's obvious that you just rattle canned it gonna go ahead and get those clipped back into the generally because this tan interior is coming out bitching i don't know why you'd ever want black interior it's garbage not stylish at all like when you look inside the car and you see a colored interior you see all the detailing and the stitching and everything with black interior you can literally open the door and all you see is just a black blur so more stylish is more pretty oh yeah it's like everything's all insulated i don't know if i showed that off yet or not but it's gonna be most quieter inside but still be most louder outside welders out something i forgot to fix which is very common on these b body mopars a bodies e bodies anything no not the e bodies i'm sorry because e bodies don't have vent window frames but anything that's got these vent window frames in a mopar down here let the camera adjust there you go so you got these two little bitty spot welds one there and one there very common that those break out like i would say half of the cars i've ever even touched those spot welds were broke so I'm just gonna go ahead and weld that back to that. Just stitch weld it on the side. So then I can put my door panels on.
so good to be in the General Lee again. I haven't been in this car in a year since we blew the last engine up. And after a year, I have spent the time to put a new interior in it. We got a brand new 440. Uh, we got some suspension upgrades, not much, just a little bit. And we even fixed the brakes. So I'm really excited to take this thing to the autocross again, which is tomorrow. But uh, the reason for this here video and Porter Muffler contacted me and said, hey, I got a muffler that I guarantee you, you will not blow out. You know, and the thing about our Porter Mufflers is that they're gonna quiet down this car, yep. but the harder you hit the go pedal, the louder it's gonna get. And when you let off, it mellows right back out again. See, that's what I want. I don't want it loud all the time. I want it loud when I hit the pedal. Exhaust leaks from the headers. <laughs> well, thank you for that. You're very welcome. Now, now I have to fix the headers. 